Welcome to this platform. So in this video, we are going to look at uh, radioactivity. Our main interest is how to plot or how to plot the information um, that is how to come up with a decay curve. That is our main interest. So the question reads, uh, C3.1 shows an apparatus used by grade 12 learner to detect radioactive emission. Background radiation was among the emission uh, detected. So I'm sure my diagram is not able to, uh, is not clear, but this is called the counter. Okay. But not to worry about that. Then we have the detector. Then, of course, the radioactive source right here. The first question is that, what is meant by background radiation? Okay. So you need to know how to define a background radiation. If you've watched my prediction, um, you are aware that I mentioned this part. So background radiation is just some amount of radiation present at all time on Earth or small amount of radiation present on Earth at all time. You might want to take note of that. Then give one example of uh, background radiation. Give one example of background radiation. So what is one example of background radiation? So one example of background radiation, you can pose, uh, you can put cosmic. That is uh, cosmic radiation or radon gas okay so quite a number of them you need to know them so now that was question uh, a one and two but for question b it says table c2 uh, c3.2 shows results obtained from the experiment after taking account of background radiation Okay, so sometimes you might be given that the background radiation, let's say, was 4 at all times. Then you are given the figures. Then you are asked to finish the table. So to finish the table, I think you need to subtract uh, background radiation. I've seen such kind of a question. You might want to take note of that. If you check among the questions on radioactivity, you will uh, come across a question such as that. Then the question is plot the graph of a count rate, that is count rate, which is count per minute against time. So the title of the graph we are going to get from here, which is time, or the graph of count rate, count per minute against time. One thing that you should know when plotting a graph, one, there should be a title. Okay, so let us just get to the graph. So the graph, I've plotted it already, but some information you might need to put it. So, like I said, the title should be there, and here is the title, the graph of count rate, that is count per minute against uh, time in minutes. Then now, look at the information that you are given here. The other thing, it's not like in mathematics where you are given a scale. Here you have to come up with a scale. Look at the highest number on the count rate, and this is on the y-axis. So on the y-axis, the highest number is 200. Now, we are using the 2 centimeter of these boxes. So for me, I've used the uh, scale of, as you can see from here, I can put my scale, that is 2 centimeter. For me, I've used 50, not 2, please, 4. 4 centimeter. For me, I'm using 50 uh, count per minute. As you can see from 0, I've jumped two boxes. Each of these is a two, so which means up to there is a four centimeter. But for me, I'm using 50. So your scale should be indicated. Others, they indicate the scale, let's say from here, so Y, two centimeter. You write Y axis, two uh, that is four centimeter to represent uh, 50 count per minute. You can write that. Then on the x-axis, what scale am I using? So all this scale you are going to come up with yourself. So for this, the highest number there, what is the highest number on the boxes that I have for the table? So the highest number that I have here is 120. So what am I going to use? So the scale that you come up with should be able to consume the number that you have. And now the scale that you come up with determine the first box or is determined by the first box. So for this 2 centimeter, I've put a 20, which means I'm going to be consistent. The next one, I'm just adding 20. I'm just adding 20. So there's nothing like 20, 30, no, because these boxes are same. So if you say 20, which means you're going to move in 20s. So up to there and to find that 
my x axis i've used uh, 2 centimeter in this case 10 uh, minutes that is what uh, i have uh, used okay so that is what i've used now what else do we have to uh, know what else do we have to know so the other thing that we can uh, do here aside from you writing a title and also the scale putting up all things you need to make sure that your graph is large enough okay then let us connect now the points so for the points that we have the first one is going to be 0, 0,200 that is 200, 0 so time 0 then of course count 200 you know that count is on the y axis then x axis so it means it's going to be right there so you put a point then the next one that you are going to uh, put is 100, 30 so you go on the graph 100 where is 100 100 is right here comma 30 now where is 30 here so 30 is in between 20 and 40 so 1 2 3 4 5 that is where 30 is and of course is pinning up to here then the next one that would like to put is um, 30 i mean 60 comma 50 60 comma 50 so this side 60 then of course this side 50 which is this part then the next one that we are uh, putting here it is uh, 120 that is 25 90 then of course 120 12.5 okay so these are the points that we are going to put and this one then you connect them with a smooth uh, cave and it's going to appear like this this is how the decay cave should appear like this and it's not supposed to be a straight line so it becomes a straight line just know that you've done something wrong so we've answered question e, that is b1 okay so we can even indicate here that this is the uh, b roman numero one okay then the other question what is the other question from the graph determine the half-life so half-life you know that is a time taken for half of the activity or for the activity to decay to half of its uh, amount the total amount is um, 200 so half-life we are just going to go where there is 100 right here you know that is time so following it up since on the x-axis that is we have time so following it up here and we should be able to pick uh, time uh, from we should be able to pick time okay you have a i mean uh, you you have a ruler to use so here i'm just doing the approximate so half life so this is the question what roman numeral two so half life what is our half life so if we are to pick from here it's almost it's just the mid part which is the 30 uh is it minutes so 30 minutes is our half life so we can just uh even indicate even put it here so half life is equals to 30 minutes okay so that is our half life now, okay then of course the other question is what fraction will decay at 120 minutes so now what fraction will decay so we are going to go at 120 minutes which is this one and you know that 120 is at 12.5 uh, so in other words 12.5 is what remains now they are saying what would decay so for us to find what would decay we need to find what we need to subtract what remains so the total was 200 minus 12.5 uh, what is the answer here so be able to find it count per minute that is the fraction of what decays so what decays you just subtract what remains and if you look at this the curve as it is coming here when it reaches this point uh, at 12.5 the whole of this part has decayed but this part has remained which is 12.5 uh, then the other question here is that a nuclear of uranium which is 235 emit an alpha particle to form thorium th write the equation for the decay or for this decay 
So equally this one from my prediction I did mention that you need to know the general equations of these or how to write the decay equation. So since this is alpha involved the general is that when the substance decay by emitting an alpha the mass number reduces by 4 the atomic number reduces by 2 then of course plus helium okay plus helium something like this so now from here we can say since we are looking at uranium we can write 2 35 then 92 then u uh, decays to uh, thorium the mass number reduces by 4 so it's going to be 2 31 then of course this one is going to be 90 plus 4 then helium so that is how it is going uh, to be okay so that is how we answer this question fully and of course what i'm urging you is that you need to know how to do uh, this part okay you don't know what you might find in an exam otherwise we can end here and see you in the next one